Come on, get them all out, quick! Stop them! Come on, get them all out, quick! Found it. When are you going to learn to knock? How can I knock with a tray of breakfast things in my hands? What do you think I am, a flipping octopus? You could cough or something. <coughs> Not now, you fool. For ten years you've been marching in here like a flat-footed air raid warden. When are you going to learn that now you're my... Ham-fisted valet. Mm. I know, I know. Now, come on, upsy daisy. No, 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 don't fuss. I can get up. <coughs> you couldn't get up a raffle without me. Oh, couldn't I? <laughs> it's all you know. Go on. Get up. Here's your breakfast. Uh, what's this? Porridge and hot milk. That's all you're going to get until you stop burping all right. over the place. Wait a minute. Stop what? Burping. I do not burp. No, not much you don't. <laughs> Wouldn't be so bad if you said pardon now and again. You know how sensitive I am. <laughs> you sensitive. Now, be careful, will you? Yes, oh, sorry, Gav. Yeah. Ready for your letters? Anything to take my mind off this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. eh? Oh, sorry, Gav. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, here. This is from the Gambler's Luck Geezer. The what? The Gambler's Luck Geezer. <laughs> Bad time, too. Dear Mr. Hilton, I'm enclosing rough draft of the balance sheet for the mm. past year. Well, I hope it balances better than my football pools. Well, the public can't expect to win every time. Wouldn't be any fun for them. <laughs> well, it's not my idea of fun. Yeah. It's a fiddle. I know, a fiddle. Mm. As you will see, we have made a fairly substantial profit mm. Though, of course, what with the police having wireless sets and motorbikes mm -hmm. these days, you don't get so much chance to run a game of chance because it's too chancy. Yours sincerely, James G. Fosdick. Yes, I'll deal with that pack of lives later. Yes. Yeah. This is from the Goat and Gators. Mr. Mason, I'm happy to report that we've been doing good business for you at the Goat and Gators lately. That's better. Yeah. Cold tea and the whiskey is certainly more profitable than water in the gin. You can't stop the march of science, can you, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mason joins me in hoping that you are well. Yours faithfully, Cyril Mason. Good fellow, Mason. Reliable. Pity there aren't more like him. All right, all right. This is from Alvy Pierce. Uh. Yes. Dear sir, just a line to let you know that all the dogs is all right and I've decided to let Windy Wendy win the big race on the 19th of April. <laughs> I'm keeping Brutal Bertie off his food to make him even more savage-like. As soon as the traps go up, you'll make mincemeat of the favourite, leaving Windy Wendy a straight run home. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you this in case you want to do something. We are both well, except that I've got a terrible pain in me guts. Hoping this finds you as it leaves me at present, yours truly, Alfie Pierce. When does he say this race is? Eh, 90th of April. <laughs> What's the matter with you now? It's my birthday. Is it? Mm. <laughs> Many happy returns of the day. Mm. <laughs> Here, this will take the grin off your face. Family. One of the nephews. Which one? 
The only one. Oh, Lord, well, go on, get over. Yeah. Well, he's consulted all the nephews and nieces. They'd like to give you a birthday party, but it should be held in May. Why May? May? Well, because they say April's such a difficult month. I know why April's a difficult month, because they want to go away on the holidays. But I happen to be born in April. I'm going to be 80 in April. And no one's going to fob me off with a party in May because it suits them better. Mm. Now, you do go on. You haven't got to go just because you've had an invite. Dashed impertinence. I tell you what we'll do. We'll give a party here. Have you gone crackers? I said here, and I meant here. I tell you what, Henry, we'll have one of those catering fellows to come along. But the family can't come in April. I lay you seven to four, they all turn up. They think there's going to be pickings when I've gone. I'll not have my 80th birthday pushed around. They want a party, they shall have a party. But it's going to be in April here. All right, all right, Governor, all right. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Just listen to this. Breakfast ready? It's from Uncle Simon. Mm. Uncle Simon requests the pleasure of your company at luncheon on Monday, April the 19th to celebrate the occasion of his 80th birthday. Very nice, too. He realizes it would have been more convenient for you had he been conceived a month later, but refuses to accept any responsibility for this. 19? But that's right in the middle of our holiday. Well, it's deliberate, of course, and so typical of him. He's too old to go away anywhere himself, and he doesn't want anyone else to. It's spite. That's what it is. One must, of course, be charitable and indulge the whims of one so near his mortal end. And, of course, since in the nature of things we're certain to inherit his house and most of his money, the inconvenience of coming up from Hastings to celebrate what we all feel must be his last birthday should be uh, well worthwhile. Did you know how I love Paris and Easter? Ah, oh, do stop binding. Business is business. Paris will still be around next year, but Uncle Simon may not. It's outrageous. But everybody's made their plans for the Easter holidays and now. Serve the old beast right if nobody turned up at all. Let's hope they don't, dear. All the more for us in the end. I never thought of that. <laughs> As you know, during his lifetime, Uncle Simon, by dint of his own industry and perseverance, has gathered unto himself a... Uh, a considerable good fortune. And I, for one, hope that he will live for many, many more years to enjoy that fortune. <laughs> and finally, my dear ones, your crackers. You keep your opinions yourself. I say your crackers. Oh, thank you. As I was saying. Get on with it, man. Get on with it. Finally, my dear ones. And finally, my dear ones, I would remind you that we are gathered here not only to celebrate a joyous occasion, but to give thanks for a long life well spent. And now I ask you to be upstanding and drink the health of our dear, our very dear Uncle Simon. Uncle Simon. Uncle Simon. She's done it, Governor, she's done it! Send a flipping one! <laughs> There's one bitch I can trust! Ah! <laughs> the old man must have won a packet. I bet it was fixed. Speech, dear Uncle Simon, speech. Come on. Uh, to all those who have something better to do than celebrate, because an old man has lived a darn sight too long for everybody's liking. Hmm? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. sit down, Gar. <laughs> Excuse me, is everybody here, please? Everybody? Everybody except Miss Clara Orton. Ah, uh, Clara, yes, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Isn't it funny? One never notices whether Clara's anywhere or not. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hilton, would you stand up, please? please? <laughs> yes, I think I can manage it. Yes, I'll try. Sure. And everyone else turn and face the camera. Oh, wait a moment. Where's that little girl that slave for us did the serving? Oh, there she is. Oh, come here, Mummy, dear. Oh, me? No, 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 come along. Oh, no, come along. No. It's all right, perfectly safe. <laughs> come along. <laughs> right. Now, still, please. Quite still. <laughs> Exquisite. All your life you've overindulged. All my life? What are you talking about? 
I haven't had all my life yet. Time and again, I've told you not to eat too much. Listen, you old quack. I sent for you here to witness my will. When I want a sermon, I'll send for that sanctimonious nephew of mine. What do you want? Who are the blazes of you? This is the lawyer, Governor. Lawyer? Yeah, you sent for him. I sent for Mr. Willis of Willis and Willis. This is Anne Willis. My father's away on holiday, sir. Ah, perhaps it's just as well. He might not approve. <laughs> Steady, Governor. Steady. Uh, I shan't want you. You can hop it. All right, all right. Do you know enough to draw up a will? Yes, sir, of course I do. And mind you, it's nothing to do with this doctor fellow here. One of these days you're going to indulge yourself a bit too much and that'll be the end. If you think I'm going to hop it just when you think I should hop it, you're very much mistaken. I shall hop it. I shall hop it when... If flipping will feel like it. Exactly. And thank you very much, I thought they'd buried you by mistake. Sorry, I ran out of gas. Yeah, well, I wish they would in there. I never heard such a blooming noise. And it was still warm and all. Shall I give them this before or after? What is it? Port. It was his last request. Give him a glass of port, he says. They'll need it. They will. Yeah, well, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's been in the flipping cellar for ten years, to my knowledge. <laughs> yeah. well, go on. I'm so sorry to have kept uh, you all waiting. Uh, Pass around these photographs, will you? Oh, good, it's the party. Yes. Oh, all right, all right, there's one for every one of you. Oh, good. Oh, do look, it's very good of you, Arthur. Yes. Oh, and sweet of Uncle Simon. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So little Jeremy Rabbit put on his purple muffler and went into the meadow and set out to find the place where the Badger brothers lived. But he hadn't got far. Clear down. When who do you think he saw bounding over the ditch? Clara. Uh, oh, 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 I am so sorry. I do apologize. <laughs> but it was all right in the end. And they As I've unavoidably kept you all waiting, I'll dispense with the preliminaries and merely read you the will itself. <clears throat> <clears throat> to all who attended my 80th birthday, a mounted photograph to remind them of that occasion. Oh, that's, that's nice. well, that's As a token of gratitude to that old reprobate, my friend and companion, Henry Martin, the sum of 100 pounds, my race glasses, and my watch. Well, that sound so. You ought not to have done that. To my natural daughter, known as Julie Mason. Natural. Good heavens. I'm sorry you had to hear that, my dear. An annuity of 240 pounds, to be remitted in payments of 20 pounds a month for life. Grace. So much for the legacies, and now for the actual estate. And quite a considerable estate, too, I might say. First, my six racing greyhounds. I leave to the only person who won't race the backsides off them to gain an extra few quid. <laughs> my niece, Clara Hilton. Clara, me? It's ridiculous. My controlling interest in the game of chance known as gambler's luck I leave to the only one of you who I can be sure hasn't had his or her greedy eyes upon it. My niece, Clara Hilton. <clears throat> but why me? The freehold licensed premises, known as the Goat in Gators, I leave to the only one amongst you who I know won't drink all the profits. <laughs> my niece, Clara Hilton. <laughs> the whole of the residue of my estate, my property at number one Lipton Grove, Paddington, occupied by Mrs. Gladys Smith and her four girls. Uh, together with this house you're all cluttering up at the moment, I leave to the only person who doesn't expect to get it. My niece, Clara Hilton. But Uncle Simon... It's preposterous, I shall contest it. Uncle Simon can't have been in his right mind. Well, the doctor who witnessed the will stated that uh, he'd never known Mr. Hilton to be saner. But there are conditions. I am leaving all this to my niece, Clara, because she was the only one who was too busy looking after other people to come to my party. Because what? Because she was the only one who was too busy looking after other people to come to my party. And so I know that I can entrust her to look after the welfare, as I would have done, of the only living creatures for whom I have any affection. Namely, Julie Mason, my dear friend, Mrs. Gladys Smith, my six greyhounds, and Henry Martin. Hey, steady, Governor. 
Practically everything goes to Clara. Including his capital after payment of death duties. And after all those beautiful hymns we sang for him. Now who'd like a nice glass of port? Sleep and darkness safely brought, restored to power and life and thought. Dear Uncle Simon, I will do my best. Oh, Henry, I didn't know you were going on holiday. I do hope you'll have a nice time. How long will you be gone? For life, miss. What? And it's not going to be holiday. You mean you're not coming back? No, miss, never. But you must, Henry. This is your home as well as mine. Uncle Simon Look, miss, so I don't fit in here any longer. I'm a man, see, and you're a woman. I mean a lady. Look, what you need's a nice lady companion who thinks the same way as you do. Not the likes of me. But, but don't you like working here? Well, I did, miss, yes, but... Oh, well, then, it'll make me very happy if you'll please remain and carry on exactly as before. Exactly, miss? Exactly. But I used to put Mr. Simon to bed. Oh. <laughs> well, of course, in my case, that wouldn't really be necessary. No, miss. Look, miss, it wouldn't work. Why not? Well, because you're a spinster. Same as me. And the neighbours might start talking. About what? Well, about you and me. Well, how perfectly sweet of them. What would they say? I'm a man, miss. I'm used to living amongst men. I don't know anything about women. I mean, ladies. At least ladies like you. And I'll be a nuisance. But, Henry, you're not a nuisance. And I need you. You... you do? Do you ever pray, Henry? Well, not regular, miss. Sometimes before a big race. I've been praying so hard for the answer. The answer to what, miss? Why Uncle Simon left me things like greyhounds and a public house. Yeah, <laughs> he always was one for a good laugh, miss. Oh, no, Henry, it was more than that. It came to me in my prayers. Go on. He wanted someone like me, someone with no ties, no children, no household worries, who could devote herself to looking after those near and dear to him. I can see him up there now. Clara, he's saying. Clara, I trust you to see that they are well and truly cared for. It's a sacred trust, him. Oh, but how can I deal with greyhounds and a public house? I know so little about that sort of life. Gladys Smith, of course, is different. Yeah, I should say she is. People I can understand, but drinking and racing. Well, we can't have you haunting saloon bars and going to the dogs all on your own, can we, uh, miss? Henry, that's Uncle Simon speaking. He's saying, Henry, help her all you can. You're my sacred trust, too. Yes. Henry, you're a dear soul. Yeah? Well, I'll go down and pack my bag, ain't I? Good, Henry, good. And we'll start tomorrow, shall we, with a lovely drive into the country. Uh -huh. We'll go and visit them at the Goat in Gators. Uh -huh. Okay, miss. I'll go and tip off the masons. Thank you, Henry. Oh, I knew you'd stand by me. <laughs> the trivia round the common task will furnish all we need to... Well, it ain't my fault, Cyril. I'm what she calls her sacred trust. Sacred trust? What's that? Well, don't ask me. I thought a sacred trust was what a bishop wore to keep his stomach in. But tomorrow of all days, we, we got four shadow bangs booked already. Oh, that's torn it. If that lot get pickled and start doing these up, Mother Brown, she'll sell the flipping base before you can say, how's your father? Well, there's only one hope, then. You'll have to get her in and out of here before we open, before the shadow bangs arrive. I can't do me best. Hey, don't say I didn't warn you. Right. Good night, cop. Here's a nice how to do. I knew things had come home to roost. How did I know that she was going to choose tomorrow? Not the shadows I'm worried about. It's Julie. If you'd had the decency to leave the girl alone instead of taking liberties, she'd still be here. 
Yeah, well, just as well she's not here, if you ask me. She might let things out, if she were. About her allowance, for instance. And what if Miss Hilton wants to know where Julie is? Now, nah, don't worry, love. Leave it to Cyril. <laughs> Oh, what a glorious day. Uncle Simon must have known how I was longing for fresh air. Look at the birds. That blackbird's just bursting itself. He ain't the only one. For the love of my God, up, Jim. We'll never get there before opening time. I'm doing my best, aren't I? Right. Oh, look at that. Can I help, Henry? You'd never believe what I did to the loudspeaker at the mission. I could, Miss Claire. Indeed, I could. Oh, well done. I can't wait to get to the goat in Gators. No, neither can I. Here, we'll just about make it. OK, to let her down. OK. Oh, <laughs> there. We are gone with the wind. You said it, Miss Clara, you said it. What a charming little hostelry. And look, Henry Charibald. <laughs> She's here. Within a moment. Keep her over the bar, whatever happens. Here, yeah, Miss Clara. Ah. Thank you, Henry. Welcome, Miss Hilton. Delighted to meet you. Thank you very much. What a pretty house you have here. Indeed, you've made the whole place quite charming. <laughs> And what sounds of gaiety. Oh, well, that's the Boy Scout fountain, isn't it, Mrs. Mason? That's right. Oh, really? Then I must go in and see them. I have a nice cup of coffee all ready for you in the parlour. How very kind of you. But I should like to see your, your Boy Scouts first. Now, look, Miss Clara, there's no hurry. You don't want the coffee to get cold now, do you? I've made some special cookies for you, too. Oh, well, in that case, we will go in this way. How are you, Miss Hilton? How do you do? We were so delighted when Henry told us you were coming, weren't we, Maggie? Delighted. <laughs> How kind of you were. This way, Miss Hilton. <laughs> the Boy Scouts seem to be enjoying themselves. The what? Yeah, I was telling Miss Hilton, the Boy Scouts always have their rallies here. So you were, Henry. <laughs> well, I must bring some of my girl guides down from the mission. <laughs> In here, Miss Hilton. I wonder if I might be allowed to wash my hands. Rather a dusty drive. But of course. <laughs> this way, Miss Hilton. Round the corner, first on the left. Thank you very much. Maggie, Cyril, quick! Hey, Cyril, you've got to get them out of here. If you come down when you said you were coming... Then what about that? You've got to get them out. Well, look at the business we're doing. Look, if she sets one foot in that bar, you won't have no business. You'll be sold up, turned out, before you can say time, gentlemen, please. All right, I'll see what I can do. Well, it's the road's clear, lady. I reckon we'll be there in about uh, oh, three quarters of an hour. Look, uh, you've got to get your party out of here. Well, it just got here. Aren't they good enough for you, or what? No, no, it's not that only... Uh, I got my reasons. There's one thing I respect, it's a man's reasons. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We're well, leaving in about two minutes. Well, he just got it. He's ready to leave. Well, that's enjoying yourself. I'm having a simply splendid time. Gone, isn't she? I think she's all right. She hasn't checked a dummy or anything, has she? I hope not. Oh, let me see. No, she was a mild and bitter, wasn't it, Dax? Oh, really? Oh, no. Wallop. Wallop? Is your mild and bitter? It's that lock. Hmm? Hey. The handle must have dropped off again. I've been on to Cyril for weeks to get it properly repaired. You don't mean to say she's locked in? She must be. Oh, I've got to go and see if she's wrapping the door. Ah, 
ਆ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ and you treat her as if she was one of your own when was this just about 3 months ago just after her 21st birthday 3 months but you never told mr simon henry mr simon hilton was good to us he trusted us he was our friend and benefactor he was a sick man and an old man would you have told him i was supposed not then it seems to me you must have three installments of her allowance in the meantime 60 pounds. I have it here, Miss Hilton. All ready for her. Every night we pray she'll send us an address so we can let her have it. Perhaps you'd better let me keep it then. I pray night and morning. Yeah, the old 60 quid takes it out of his hands and puts it in her bag as calm as you please. I've never been so embarrassed since I've had the appendix out. Anybody thinks she didn't trust him? Well, maybe she doesn't. Hey, what's good enough for the gun? Is good enough for her. Poke her nose in here, there and everywhere. Always causing trouble. How do you do, Miss Hilton? How are you, Charles? Oh, may I call you that? <laughs> Now, where's my bag? Here you are, Miss. I'm so glad you've come. There's work to be done. Here we go again. I want you to find a missing person. How can it be? She's gone abroad. She may have and she may not. But the Mason said so. Mm. Now, here's her photograph. Her name is Julie. But this is her. Well, of course it's her. Well, she hasn't gone abroad. I'm dining with her tonight. I? Mm. With Julie? Yes. Where did you meet her? At the funeral. Oh no, you never. She wasn't there. No, no, no. Not in the church. Neither was I. I met her outside while the service was going on. Oh, forgive me, Miss Hilton. I did mean to go in. What there. a nerve! What do you mean? Whilst we were paying our last respects to Mr. Simon Hilton, you were outside playing as your father. I've never heard of such a thing. What do you think, Miss Hilton? I think it's absolutely wonderful. Hey? Well, Have to think of these two delightful young people being brought together like that. Uncle Simon would be so pleased. Pleased he must be turning over in his grave like a Catherine wheel. Oh, come, come in. Don't be so starchy. <laughs> Is she happy? Has she got a job? Oh, yes, at the at the flower shop in Connaught Road. Well, if there's nothing more, Miss Hilton, you'll forgive me. I really must fly. 
tell her I'll be coming round to see her. Right. No, no. On second thoughts, I don't think you want to be talking about me or Simon's will. I'll introduce myself to her in my own good time. Yes, Miss Elton. It doesn't do to mix business and pleasure. <laughs> no, Miss Elton, I am. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, please. Oh, yes. Dear boy. Oh, Henry, what a marvellous stroke of fate. Stroke? I like a stroke with a hairbrush. Well, so you're off too. Now, I was just going to ring the Masons. Tell them that Julie was all right. No, we won't unsettle the Masons yet. I think I'll write them a letter after I've had a rest. Oh. But don't let that stop you going to your local. Hey? Oh. Good morning, Bailey. Oh, good morning, miss. How's Mrs. Bailey? Much better, thank you. Oh, good. That hot water and lemon you recommended did more good than all the doctor's prescriptions put together. Yes, I know. There's nothing like the old-fashioned remedies. You're quite right. Mm -hmm. But give her my best wishes. I will. Good day. Good morning and thank you. Henry, it's all arranged. What is, miss? Julie, I found her at the flower shop. Aren't they lovely? Uh, yes, miss. It's early closing tomorrow, so she's coming here to tea. What for? Hasn't she caused enough trouble already? To sign the papers for her allowance, of course. And I shall arrange with Charles to be here as well. But, Miss Clara, solicitors have offices for that sort of thing. They don't have to come knocking on doors like insurance men. But, Henry, don't you see? Julie has no idea that Charles is our solicitor. She'll expect to find some musty-fusty old fogey. And when she arrives... She'll find Mr. Anne Willis in all his flipping glory. Yes. Can't you just see their happy faces? Why, what's this letter? Huh? It's addressed to Uncle Simon. Oh, it's an old one. I found it in the desk. We must have missed it when we uh, cleared it out. Henry, are you speaking the truth? Me? Oh, Miss Clara. Well, I merely ask because this is yesterday's postmark. Look. Hey? Oh, well, if you must know, it's from the gambler's luck geezer. <laughs> yes, I recognise his handwriting. I didn't think you wanted to be troubled. It's my duty to be troubled, Henry. Any letter addressed to Uncle Simon is my concern. Yes, Miss. Henry. Hand it over. Thank you. Dear Mr. Hilton, this is to send you my best respects and to Henry, who I hope is keeping fairly sober. Do oh, you might like to see him. And to tell you that things weren't too good in the north, but I hope to pick up a packet on the downs. A packet of what, Henry? Dough. Dough on the downs. It sounds like manna from heaven. It is, it is. If you want to see how things are going, I'll be at Epsom all the week, working close to Max Merry-Go-Round. This is a gift from heaven, Henry. Yeah, but if you ask me, heaven's getting a bit too generous. Ring up and order the car. We'll go and see the dear man this afternoon. What? Well, now, look, Miss Clary, this is a man's job. You mustn't get mixed up in that crowd. You cause more trouble than Errol Flynn in an r -in. Oh, what nonsense, Henry. It's Uncle Simon's wish. I'm in honour bound. Besides, I quite like Errol Flynn. Do. as usual, honest blooming Joe. Look, Henry, look. There's another merry-go-round. 
perhaps it's Max. Who's? Max. Well, Mr. Fostick said he'd be playing his gambler's luck. Come on, let's go and see. Now, look, there's no hurry to get there, Miss Clara. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Look, you've got all the afternoon to get round there. I can't wait to see Mr. Fostick, Henry. Oh, there we are. Right, uh -huh. Henry. Oh, you know, baby's bottle. Baby's bottle. Excuse me, Miss Clara. Yeah. Do you mind if I go and see a man about the dog? Don't you mean horse, Henry? Oh, it's seven up on the field. Seven up on the field. Three them up now, man. Three them up now, man. Scratching yourselves, who wants a bat? Can't see anything, lady. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I'm simply longing for a nice cup of tea. Cup of tea? Yes, please. Why, then, what it used to be. People used to come to Epsom to back horses, but not today. No, today they come and ask you for cups of tea. Ten pounds or two on hells of ten. Ten pounds two hells of pop in seven, three, two. All right, seven up. Excuse me, sir. You're a bookmaker, I presume. That's right, lady. May I shake you by the hand? How do you do? How do you do? I've often read about bookmakers, but I've never actually met one before. I hope I don't disappoint you, lady. On the contrary, you interest me very much. I'm so pleased. Yes. Pound a pound of ten, Charlie boy. Pound a pound of ten, Charlie boy, down at Charlie. All right, three, three to one bar one. All right, three to one bar one. Uh, do you enjoy your work? I used to, lady. Oh. Seven and four to five. Fifty pounds to five, Charlie boy, seven, two, seven. Five, baby's bottle. Forty pounds to five, baby's bottle, seven, two, eight. Here, yeah, while the secrecy, mate, ain't you over 21 or something? I'm with an old lady who don't approve of betting. Well, why didn't you leave her at home? She brought me here. She brought me here. She's been held to popping. Ten pounds to two hours of popping, 729. No, lady. Each way doesn't mean they have to run there and back. It means if your horse comes second or third, you still get paid something. But even if he doesn't win? That seems exceedingly generous. Lady, we're too soft-hearted for this wicked, greedy world. Now, do me a favor. Yes? Do you want to get on or don't you? What on earth? Can I? Oh, yes, help me up. <laughs> Thank you. How terribly kind of you. I can see much better from up here. Miss Clara! Yes, Henry? What are you doing up there? Well, this kind Is this yours? Over. Get her out of here before I call the cops. All right, get her out of here! Oh, I've only got to leave you for a minute and you go and get in an horrible mess. It's so new. Oh, interesting. We've got to find Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster, yeah. Oh, look, Henry. Oh, gorgeous heaven. That's Prince Mononulu. A prince? How wonderfully democratic. You don't have anything to do with him, Miss Clara, now. Oh, yes, I must pay my respects. I've got a horse. Your Highness, what's it called? Here you are, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a very clever backer who comes to me to get the genuine information. Black man for luck, white woman for pluck. Half a crown, my lady. Oh, what a Half perfectly a... splendid example for us all. A prince of royal blood collecting for charity. There you are, Your Highness. I've oh. got a horse. I've got a horse. Beautiful name, Golden Sunset. You had a horse. You had a horse. I had a horse. I declare, man. Oh, only look. That's very good, man. Then it must be here somewhere. Look, Miss Claire, haven't you caused enough trouble already? Please, please forget it. But it must be somewhere, Henry. It can't just disappear into still air. You don't know uh, gambler's luck. Gambler's luck. Well, here we are. <laughs> no. Gambler's luck. Go. Our prayers are on, sir. Our prayers. Yeah, you speak for yourself, Miss Clara. We're on the right track. The right track. And, right. ladies and gentlemen, Pansy Robin is the winner. Now, who is Lucky Pansy Robin? I am. I don't want any cracks out of you. And the very best of good luck to you, sir. The very best of good luck to you. Cigarettes. Cigarettes it is. Everybody chooses their own prize on this stall. Thank you very much. Now, who's ready for the next turn of the wheel? Here we go. This game is so simple that even a kitty can win. One wheel flowers, the other wheel bird. Birds and flowers. Quite charming. How Uncle Simon must have loved it. Thank you, sir. And the very best of good luck to you. And the very best of... <laughs> I beg your pardon, madam. Not I beg your pardon. Rose Sparrow is the winner. Now, who is the lucky holder of Rose Sparrow? No one? No, oh, how very unfortunate. Don't go away, friends. Once more, we have a turn of the lucky wheel. Here we go. A shilly a go it is. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Such a very clever game. 
Now, look, you've seen enough of it now, Miss Clara. Come on. One moment. Thank you, madam. All the very best of good luck to you, and you too, sir. Thank you. How do you do? Uh, how do you do, madam? One shilling a day. Thank you. Thank you I, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you Oh, before. you don't say. One shilling. Thank you very much, madam. Uncle Simon's dead, you know. So is my grandmother. Thank I you told you he'd be rude to you, Miss Clip. I'm the owner of your pretty game. And I'm Little Red Riding Hood. Thank you very much, indeed. But, 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 but my name is Clara Hilton. Now, look, lady, I'm a very patient man, but don't drag me too far. Get out of here before there's any trouble. Thank you, Sarah. What? Hilton? Hilton? Yes, Hilton. It's true. Henry! Oh, Miss Hilton, welcome, welcome, Miss Hilton. Yes, how <laughs> nice to meet you, my tell that nice little pedal you press. Oh, no, foot. ladies and gentlemen, it's only a shilling ago. All you have to do is buy one ticket. Uh, Miss Hilton, how would you like to take a turn of the wheel just to bring us luck? I'd simply love oh, it. You would? No, Miss Clara, no, no. There you are, Miss Hilton. It's all oh, yours. No. Miss Clara, no. Oh, oh please, Miss Clara. Now, come along, ladies and gents. Try your luck with birds and cars. Okay. Recognize it? You and me. Get down the back. Very good, sir. Come on. Now, come along, ladies and gentlemen, who's for a turn of the lucky wheel? Just in time, gentlemen. Only a shilling. Only a shilling a girl. Come along, Henry. Take your money. Officer. Sorry, officer. Too late this time, I'm afraid. Well, Sparrow again. Isn't that a coincidence? Okay, take them off. We need that in evidence. Oh, don't, don't, please. Just one You nearly start a ride at Epsom. There's a little matter of the winner of the 230. And if it hadn't been for some smart talk on the part of Anne Willis here, we should all be in jail for the next six months. Oh, yes, Henry, I admit. The climax was most unfortunate. Yes. But the police could hardly be blamed, could they, for jumping to wrong conclusions? I reckon we were very lucky, Miss Henry, Henry, Henry. Shall we have the cake stand over here? Yes, Miss. You know, I don't think Mr. Fosdick can lead a very happy life. I do wish I could find some use for him in our world. Oh, if only I had the strength. Look, Miss, at your time of life, you ought to be taking things more quiet, like. Don't you agree, Mr. Willis? Well, if there's anything I can do by visiting some of the other beneficiaries for you, I... Ah, now you're talking! Well, there are only the dear dogs left now. Look, Miss, if you... Oh. And... Oh, but you don't know anything about dogs. Why don't you let Mr. Willis and I do it for you? I'm very fond of dogs. No, thank you, Henry. Thank you, both of you. But Uncle Simon put his trust in me. He's depending on me. Mr. Simon ain't depending on anybody. He's dead. Of course he isn't dead, Henry. He ain't? Who do we lay six feet under the ground? Julius Caesar? Uncle Simon is living because he expressed a wish, and that wish is alive in us, in our consciences. If we kill it, then he is dead indeed. And no six feet could ever give him rest. She fair gives me the willies down again, I'll tell you. There's Julie. I'll let her in. No, no. You go, Henry. Oh, please. I'm keeping you as a surprise. Good evening. I'm Julie Mason. Is Miss Hilton in? She is. Don't even recognize me now, eh? Why, it's Henry. I'm so sorry. It's been such a long time. How are you? I feel a lot better if you hadn't gone round causing trouble for everyone. She's upstairs. I've said it for Mr. and Mrs. Mason, after all the things they've done for you. Oh, listen, Henry, I can explain. That night before I left her, Oh, hello, Miss Hilton. Julie, dear, I'm so glad you've come. You know Henry, of course. Oh, yes, Henry and I are old friends. 
friends. I've got no time for people that bite the hands that feeds them. Oh, I... Henry, Henry. It's just that I've been putting a rather unfair burden on him. But we'll soon clear things up. Our solicitor's here to do that now. And I think you'll find you may place every confidence in him. Julie, this is our solicitor. Hello, Julie. Good evening. So this is your solicitor? Brother. Yes, isn't it splendid? And he knows all about the will, who my father was. Of course. And he wants you to sign it. To show that you understand and agree. This being the last will and testament of Simon Hilton... Perhaps, Charles, that part is already understood. Oh. To Julie Mason, my natural daughter... Where do I sign? Hey, just a minute. Pen, please. Here? Yes. Thank you very much, Miss Hilton. I had hoped you'd stay to tea. I'm afraid I have another appointment. I'm sorry. I, too, am sorry. Hey, but Julie, wait a minute. You have... There you are. Didn't I warn you? What about? The way she treated the Masons. Perhaps, Charles, you also have another appointment. Thank you, Miss Hilton. I have indeed. Just like the start of a dog race, isn't it? Oh, dear. And such a nice tea. Yeah. Well, at least we know they're in love. Hey? Right? Everything matters so much at that age. Love? Here. You've got to stop it, Miss Hilton. She's a girl of character, Henry. Yeah, real bad character, if you ask me. Oh. And she'll make him an excellent wife. If she's an example of an excellent wife, thank goodness I'm a flipping bachelor. Come on, I'll drive you home. No, thank you. I'm going by bus. You're doing nothing of the sort. You're coming in the car. No nonsense. Is that a promise? What? No nonsense. Oh, for the love of Pete. You know, if you're going to adopt this fantastic attitude every time a man tries to kiss you goodnight, you're going to end up with a couple of buttery guards and a cat. And from the look of things, it won't even be a tomcat. Well, I've done my best to put her off. I've told her the dogs are fit and win every flipping race. But they haven't won a race for months. Not on the level. Well, they're going to do something, Alfie. She owns them now. You've got to convince her that they're full of beans and run like the wind. With the wind? No, not with the wind. Like. Yeah, now listen. If she's not satisfied, you'll lose them quicker than you'll lose your reputation. And another thing, she don't approve of betting, so I've told her that you're running them for honour and glory. Who are they? Trophies. Oh, trophies. You mean cups and things. All right, if you say so. Yeah, here, yeah. make them big ones. OK, Henry, leave it to me. Right, good night, cop. Put your coat on, Lily, we're going out. Where to? To the sports club to borrow some cups. We're having a party. Yes, tomorrow. An interfering party. Well, what an impressive sight. So Uncle Simon's dogs won all these. He must have been very proud. Your uncle thought more of his dogs, Miss Hilton, than he did of himself. I can remember him saying now, with tears in his eyes, Alfie, he says, you don't know what a treat it is to have the fastest bitch in England. Well, you must both be great animal lovers, too. Love them like children. Don't we, Mother? Yes. Sometimes it's only their tails that stops us looking on them as our own kith and kin. How touching. Would you like to go and see the dogs now, Miss Clara? Yes, Henry, indeed I would. Uh, the missus and I'll be along in a minute. We're just getting their dinners ready. What is that? Some nice soup? Uh, no, it's awful. Yes. Well, it smells rather awful, if I may be allowed to say so. <laughs> that way, Miss Hilton. <laughs> keep her away from Brutal Bertie. Brutal Bertie? The one we keep to savage the favourites. But of course! Might nip her fingers off. Here we are, Miss Blair. Oh, so these are the dear dogs. Yeah, that's it. As I was turning in the car, they're almost human. Yes. Yeah, you've got to use this here um, uh, psychologically. Well, what is that, a patent food? Hey? Oh, no, no, you've got to get them to like you. You know, use your loaf. Give them plenty of bread. <laughs> bread. I must be getting too technical. Hello, hot stuff. Yeah, there's a lovely dog for you, eh? Yes. Look at him. He looks happy enough. Well, of course he's happy. You don't expect they can win all them cups unless they're happy. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Here, yeah, boy. Here, yeah, what's Here, that? Boy. What are you getting? Here, yeah, what's this? Chocolate. I've got a piece for each of them. Well, you mustn't give them that. They're in oh. training. Oh. Yeah, chocolate's almost as bad as bangers and meat pies. Bangers? Yeah. 
banger, sausages. Well, that's what you give them when you want them to lose. Well, what did I tell you? Easy as falling off a log. Well, don't you lay it on too thick. I got a feeling she's a bit more fly than she looks. Oh, I'd like to see her get the better of me. Come on, Eddie, up with that grub. Well, this one doesn't look too well either. Daddy, he's all right. Lovely hunk of canine, that is. You know, that was the winner of the... Ah! Here, Miss Clara, this way. Henry, I don't think this dog is well. But he's all right, I tell you. Look, he's lying there as happy as a sand boy. I promised Uncle Simon. Henry, do go in and see. Who, me? Just to make sure. Well, what do you want me to do, feel his pulse? Just to please me. You know so much about dogs, and I know so little. Yes. Brutal. Brutal. I think you're offending him, Henry. Yeah. Try calling him Bertie. 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 Oh, Lord. How did I, Henry? Yeah. He can't be well. No. Well, you'd better tell Mr. Pierce. G -g Good idea. Yes. <laughs> now then, boy. Now, don't forget, take it easy. Trust me. Oh, look out. Quick, Albie, quick! It's b b Brutal Bertie! What's he done? He's got the berserk! Leave it to me! I know how to handle that creature. Bertie, fancy calling you Brutal. Here's a good job. Here it is. It's all right, Henry. I think he was just a little lonely. There, dear boy. I must go now. Tell me, I'll see you again soon, Bertie. Good, good job. Yeah. Oh. What's that, Mr. Pierce? Oh, just a precautionary measure, Miss Hilton. I quite understand, but I'm not sure the dog would. <laughs> Still, on the whole, I think they're very well kept. I thought you'd think so. <laughs> what am I to do you? So you're Hamy. <laughs> you lovely fellow. Hello, what's this? Not a sore, I hope. Oh, no, 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 miss. Just a birthmark. Oh, birthmark, is it? <laughs> down, Haymaker, down, down, boy. <laughs> and I told you, Miss Clear, happy as a sandboy. He can't wait to get after that air. <laughs> I'll have to let him have his run on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to win another lovely cup, Haymaker? It's in the bag, miss. One of Mr. Simon's favourites, he was. <laughs> and I'm quite sure Uncle Simon would want me to watch his triumph. See you on Saturday, Haymaker. And mind you win. I told you not to lay it on too thick. That dog's never won a race in his life. Oh, Bonnie! Leave it to me. I'm sorry I dashed out like that before you'd finished with all your papers. Was there anything else to sign? Oh, no, nothing. Just tell me the name of the bank you want your allowance into. Well, I haven't got a bank. Didn't you bank any of the allowance you had up to Simon's death? What allowance? The money that Simon sent to Mason to pay you. I might have guessed. You mean you never saw it? Not a penny. Waiter, bill please. Well? What's the matter? Come on. Where are we going? To call on Aunt Clara. Oh dear. Cool, what a nerve. Pocketing Miss Judy's money with one hand and making a bars out of with the other. After the things I said about you, miss. I could bite my tongue out. Oh, that's all right, Henry. And the sooner we see the Masons, the better. Ah, you won't see them again. Once they see Miss Clear's letter say we found Julie, I'll be off like a pack of greyhounds. You know, Henry, I don't believe I posted that letter. Eh? Come to think of it, I don't believe I even wrote it. You never wrote it? Then I'm off. Oh, no, you ain't. Not without me, you ain't. Now, listen, Henry, this is my affair. Julie's my girl, and I did for her dad. That makes it my affair. Well, actually, Julie is my concern. It was Uncle Simon's wish that I look after her. Why don't we all go? It's a lovely night for a drive. A splendid suggestion, my dear. I'll go and get my cape and hat. But remember, Charles, no violence. We must all be perfectly calm and allow the Masons to have their say. <laughs> Here's yours, Charlie. Right, OK. Here's yours, Gav. Thank you, Jim. Oh, he's Henry. How oh, nice to see you. Maggie, is Henry. Hello, Henry. What are you going to have? He's on the house. So the flipping roof, but I'm not going to guarantee how long. Henry, Henry. Miss Hilton, this is indeed a pleasure. Well, this is a surprise. We very same this morning, aren't we? But... Julie. 
Darling. It's our own little Julie, Cyril. Come home to us. Yeah, we thought we'd lost her. You must be very happy. We are terribly happy. Yeah, terribly. And relieve, believe me, Miss Hilton, you know idea. We've every idea. Mr. Mason, I'd like a word with you in private. Well, certainly. Uh, come through here. Oh, hadn't I better go too? No, Dutch, you serve the drinks. On the house, Cyril said. What do you have, Julie? Oh, a gin and tonic. Please. Gin and tonic. How about you, Miss Clara? Well, I'd like a nice glass of port. <laughs> A nice glass of port. A gin and tonic, glass of port, and a black and tan. I see. You didn't let her have her allowance because you thought it would be bad for her to have money. That's it. Girls like her have to have every temptation put out of their way. <laughs> well, just like her father she was. Hmm. No morals. Why, she might have ended up on the street. <laughs> Termites with their boots on. I trust Charles is not resorting to violence. <laughs> I tell you, she was a proper bad lot. She's always going home with... <laughs> There's nothing like a nice wallop. <laughs> Henry. Oh, oh. I'm going to hand it to you. Ah. You read the form book better than I did. Yes. About Julie, I mean. Mm. Clever old stick sometimes, aren't you? <laughs> well, I like to think it was Uncle Simon guiding me to what is best for Julie. Ooh, there you go, giving me the willies again. Now, look here. You can have a nice day in bed tomorrow. I'm going to bring you up your breakfast, luncheon, nice oh, hot sausage. Henry, that will be lovely. <laughs> you mean you will? Yes. I need the rest. Oh, what a change. Seeing sense at last, eh? Because I must be at my best in the evening. Don't say we're going on flipping night shift now. Well, you know it's the concert for the children's holidays. Oh, Henry, I do hope people will try and be a little more generous this time and forget their silly taxation. It's such a good cause. Look, trying to get anybody to cough up for charity these days is like trying to get a Russian choir to sing God Bless America. Oh, I do love your little jokes. <laughs> Still, we are up against it, Henry. You know, the whist drive only showed a profit of eight shillings and fourpence. Is that all? Mm. Still, I'm not going to worry. My prayers have been answered before, and I think they will be again. Yeah? I shouldn't be surprised if they were. Good night, Miss Clara. Good night, Henry. <laughs> Worship the Mayor, Lady Mayoress, ladies and gentlemen, the last most professional contribution almost concludes our little concert this evening, which, as you know, is in aid of our Children's Holiday Fund. <coughs> as I am sure you must all remember uh, the childhood delights of making sand castles, splashing one another in the briny, and playing leapfrog on the beach. I am going to ask the children to give you one last song while my dear friend Henry Martin makes the collection. Please, dear people, please give generously so that these children may also enjoy a holiday by the seaside. <laughs> Don't you strain yourself, will you? Is that all? 
That's old Doc. This lot weren't born, they were quarried. Oh, thank you very much, Doc. Well done, children, well done. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind generosity. Good night, Mr. Larry. Oh, good night, Mr. Larry. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night Mrs. Fotherington. Good thank night. you for coming. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Larry. Good night. Here you are, Miss Clara. Now, Miss Hilton, you've been doing far too much lately. Oh, never mind about me, Doctor. It's the poor children. How are we going to get them a holiday? They've got plenty of time for holidays. You haven't. Oh, but I'd so hope that my prayers would be answered. Now, listen, folks, listen! Now, look. Everybody likes a gamble. You don't have to go to Monte Carlo to get it. You can have it here and right now. And don't forget that it's all in aid of the children's holiday fun. So come up and back your fancy on Gambler's Luck! Right, like all of you go for it, it's all yours! Walk out, walk out, ladies and gents! Here's a chance of your fortune! Up and round the time, please! Every prize must be won, thank you, sir! Right, old friend, it's all yours! Thank you, go for the step, please! Rose Sparrow! Nobody got Rose Sparrow? It will never happen before! Watch it again! Thank you, thank you, man! Thank you! Ah, that's what I said, it's half a round! Thank you very much! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Saturday afternoon's Greyhound Racing. The first race will be starting shortly. Thank you. Oh, what an animated scene, Henry. And what a perfectly sweet idea, putting the dogs in different coloured jackets. Yeah. So much prettier, isn't it? It's nothing to do with their personal beauty, Miss Clara. Look, Henry, a bunny. A what? A bunny rabbit. Look, what's that for? That's not a rabbit, Miss Clara. That's an electric hare. Oh! No! Of course it isn't a hare, Henry. A hare's a much bigger animal altogether. Its hind legs are much longer, for one thing. And a hare gives great leaps in the air. Give me those, please. Huh? Let me look. Oh, no, that's definitely a bunny, Henry. Look at its little short legs and its small ears. A hare, you know, has extraordinarily long ears. Yeah. Come on, number five! Give it all you've got, boy! Give it all you've got! Everything you've got! Go on! Go on! Yeah! Sorry, Miss Clara. Start of first place. First, number one. Is that all, Henry? I hardly saw the dogs. That's all, Miss Clara. I make us in the next race. Hot just rolls, hot dogs, hot dogs, hot yeah, dogs, ladies. Just what I want is let me have some, please. Feeling hungry, Miss Clara? Yeah, they have a haymaker. He simply adores sausages. Well, don't you give him them before the race, otherwise you run like a middle-aged fan dancer. <laughs> All behind, eh? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Clara. Sausage right. rolls, hot dogs, oh, they're lovely. They're lovely. <laughs> Why you want to enter a dog like Haymaker beats me. Funny things happen in dog racing. <laughs> but not blooming miracles. Sergeant Sam will skate it. Everything's on ice these days, Mr. Clara. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Hello, Henry. Hello, Mr. Mr. Good day, Mr. Pierce. What's its chances? When my dogs run, chance doesn't enter into it. <laughs> How is he? He looks very trim and beautiful. You know Miss Hilton as his owner. You ought to be walking him round. May I? Bring him luck. Oh. <laughs> Just keep him on the move. <laughs> yes, we'll go for a stroll. Come on, boy. Come along, Henry. Shh. What do you mean chance doesn't enter into it? Wait. You know me. You know your Aunt Clara. Hello. Where's your birthmark? You want half in a mess now? Haymaker will never do it. It's not Haymaker. It's Crusader. I the one that won the Hampshire Derby last week. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Blimey. Switched them the night before last. You're a marvel. You never know the difference, would you? Yeah. There's a lovely tidbit. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Twenty-five quid? Blimey. You do the same, Henry, lad. And we'll both be accepted in society. If we're rumbled, we'll be the prisoners and it's a sorry. Here is an announcement concerning the next race. In addition to the prize money, a handsome silver cup has been awarded by an anonymous girl. And how much did that cost you? On the nod. It'll be back in the pawn shop by this evening. Oh, you think of everything, don't you? Leave it to your own cloud He knows what he's doing. Come along, boy. On with your visor. You're going into action now. There we are. Oh, is he quite happy, missus? Oh, he's blissfully happy, Mr. Pierce. 
And how about you? Never felt better, yeah. have we, Henry? Oh, never, Miss Clary, never. Oh, I think I'd better take him now. They'll be parading soon. Yes, Come along. Maker. <laughs> so long, miss, so long. So long. See you at the Ritz. Yeah, we'll have a pint out of that nice big cup, eh? <laughs> well, yes, well, come along, Miss Pera. This way. <laughs> now, I'm sure you'd like to go and see the parade, Miss Pera. Yes, I would. <laughs> well, talking of parades, Henry, that man thinks his military dog will win. Military dog? Oh, you mean Sergeant Sam? Yeah. Oh, you mustn't believe all you hear about sergeants, Miss Clara. No, perhaps not. Uh, now, well, if you'll excuse me, I'll see you in the stand. Where are you off to now, Henry? To see a man about a horse? Here you are! Fifty pound haymaker! What, all on haymaker? The old flipping lot! Ten fifties haymaker, one five one. Stop! Haymaker. There's one born every minute. Two pound a champ. Kick Morning, the two the champ. Hello, Lily. Hey, I'd put the lot on, shirt and all. <laughs> here, where's Miss Hilton? Hey, I don't know. I thought she was here. I hope she isn't up to nothing. Huh? Who is this? Oh, oh, here, you're out of breath. Which race were you in? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it must be the excitement. <laughs> oh, well, well, it all affects us differently, doesn't it, eh? <laughs> Look, there's Alfie. Put in haymaker in the trap, see it? <laughs> yes. See what I mean, Henry? Definitely a bunny. I make us there. He's in the lead. Look, look. Oh, oh and a boy. Too late. He's done with it. He's a walk over. Oh, hey, now what are you, Miss Claire? Have a look. Go on. Stick it. Stick it. Definitely a bunny, Henry. Look at those legs. He's fading. He's fading. Come on, give me all you've got! All you've got! Go on, you've only got a little time to come! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Result of second place. First, number five. Did he win, Henry? Second, number four. Mrs. Pierce, can you tell me who won? Number five, Sergeant Sam. Thank you very much. Look what's coming. Something went wrong. Leave it to Uncle Alfie. Fifty quid down the drain, and another twenty to pay out on that perishing copy. Oh, Thirty-two. Thirty-four. Thirty-six. Thirty-eight. Now I've seen the lot. Come in. I suppose Alfie's had his chips now. Well, I should think so, Henry. It's well past supper time. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I mean, he's lost his job. You'll be taking the dogs away from him. Why should I? What? Well, what do you mean, why should you? Well, admittedly, it was a little deceitful of Mr. Pierce changing the dogs round like that. But he only did it to impress me. Because he loved the dogs so much and he wanted to keep them. I think we'll say no more about it. What, you, you mean you're going to let him carry on training the dogs? Yes. I think he'll be an honest trainer from now on. You bet he will. They don't make many like you, Miss Clara. Well, that's as well. We don't want too many pernickety old sticklers like me messing about. Oh, don't you believe it. The world could do with a lot more art clearers. Thank you, Henry. Good night, Miss. Oh, Henry, I was almost forgetting. How much did you lose on Haymaker? Me, miss? I never had a bet, miss. Was it all of Uncle Simon's legacy? Fairish chunk, miss. I don't think he'd have liked you to do that, would he? No. 
No, I don't suppose he would, miss. Just a minute, Henry. Come back here. Take that. What's this, miss? Well, open it and see. Now, you can't do this, miss. I can't take it. I lost my bet and that's that. If it hadn't been for me, you'd have won it. I know, miss, but I didn't deserve to win. Well, neither did I. So I've no more right to the money than you have. Oh, please take it, Henry. But look, there's too much here, miss. Well, what's over is for Alfie Pierce. That cup must have been quite expensive. You mean... You mean you knew about that too? Mr. Pierce rather gave himself away with the cups in his house. Even I know the dogs don't win the hundred yards backstroke. No, miss. Well, you'd better hurry, Henry, or you'll be too late for your tan and black. Not tan and black, miss. Black and tan. Well, I don't want you to miss it. Off you go. Thank you, miss. Good night, Henry. Good night, Miss Clara. little old friend. We are both rather worn out. This is Gladys Smith. Yes? May I come in and talk to you? Well, I'm Mr. Simon Hilton's niece. And he left everything to me. You? <laughs> oh, forgive me, dear. I don't mean to be rude. I just can't help it. <coughs> I'm so sorry, dear. I always was one to laugh in the wrong place. That's what your uncle liked about me. Well, I'm sure there must have been other things he liked as well. There well. Come on in. Thank you. The old sound so she must have nipped off to the mission when my back was turned. Oh, on a day like this, too. So I think I've got everything settled now. I've had to make a change or two at the goat in Gators, but I believe that the dogs will be happy with Mr. Pierce. And what about gambler's luck? Well, I've left that with Mr. Fostick. I don't approve of gambling, of course, but now that he's going to send half the profits to my children's holiday fund, it makes... <laughs> I suppose that's funny, too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, dear. <coughs> so that only leaves you. And I've left you till the last, I'm afraid. Rather naughty of me, it sounds. But Henry would keep putting me off. I don't know why. He didn't seem to want me to come here. No? I'm all right. Yes, that's what Henry says. But Uncle Simon wished that you be adequately provided for. Do you use all this house or left part of it? There are four rooms left. Cheerio, Gladdy, dear. Lovely weather for it, I don't think. Oh, sorry, I'm sure I didn't know you had company. Come in, Dolly, dear. I'd like you to meet Miss Hilton. How are you, my dear? You must be one of the girls my uncle was so interested in. Interested? <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> oh, well. Bye-bye, Miss Hilton. Bye-bye, Gladdy. Bye-bye, Dolly. Dory is not at all young, is she? Neither of the other three. They're raining harder than ever. But they can't go on doing the, what they do for much longer, can they? Couldn't they find some other kind of... Uh, well, such as? Laundry work. <laughs> They're not the domesticated type. Oh, don't think I've come to interfere. Please come back here. 
I'm going to tell you something I haven't told anybody else. I know. You've got to get things settled. That's it, isn't it? How did you know? By the look in your eyes. An operation? I rather think it's too late for that. Well, don't you worry about me and the girls. That's my headache. <laughs> Would you need a tot of brandy? Then I'll ring for a taxi and send you home. Thank you so much. You have a heart of gold. Not too good. She looks all in. Who's that? It's Mr. Charles and Miss Julie. Bring them in. Don't tell me. Oh, isn't it lovely? Uncle Simon will be so pleased. So very pleased. Charles, dear, you will take care of her, won't you? I'll do my best, Aunt Clara. Thank you, dear. I think this calls for some sort of celebration, don't you, Miss Clara? Yes, Henry, what a splendid idea. Take them around to our local. Our local? Our local, Henry. Oh, and Charles, dear, deal with that for me, will you? Yes, of course. Tomorrow, will you? Bless you, Junie. God bless you both. You have made me so very happy. Good night, Aunt Clara. Good night. Good night, Uncle Good night, John. Good night. Good night, Miss Clara. I've done my best, dear Uncle Simon. Your sweet Julie and that nice Charles. I think they'll be very happy. Gladys Smith and her girls won't have to go out in the rain anymore. They'll be warm and comfy now. Mr. and Mrs. Pierce, I know, will take good care of the dear dogs. They'll find that honesty pays in the long run. And I'm sure Mr. Fostick will feel far happier now that gambler's luck is paying for the children's holiday fund. You could knock me down with Arthur Shandy when I found she'd gone. Well, the doctor said she knew she hadn't got long to live. Yeah, that's why she'd never let up. She wanted to carry out his wishes before she was took. Mm. Uh, never complained. Never thought of herself. Uh, there's one thing I'm glad about, that she never got round to seeing Gladys Smith. God, that really would have upset the poor old soul. But she did see her. What? When? I don't know when, but she's seen her all right. But she never told me. Well, perhaps she thought you didn't approve of Mrs Smith. Well, don't tell me she approved of her. She must have found some good in her because she's left her the house at Lipton Grove and some money for the benefit of four ladies whose names I've forgotten. Not Doris, Rose and Eunice? Yes, and that's right. Now, who are they? Blimey. What a pity the world ain't run by Aunt Clara's. Oh. Oh. I must be off. I've got to make the arrangements. She's left you the goating gators. <laughs> me. Me. 
You don't think... What's on your mind, Henry? Hey? Well, I was just thinking. That money I lost at the dog track, mm -hmm. well, she paid me back. Well, what about it? Well, you don't think it'd be sort of wrong to uh, pay for a monument with it? I can't think of anything she'd like more. Yeah. Yeah, something quite plain and simple. Simple? Mm-hmm. Simple? Here, this is going to be posh. Marble. Ten feet high. An angel on the top. Yeah, with great big flipping wings. <laughs> Cheerio!